So it's time to start the floors. Uh, Eric got this uh, bamboo flooring. I'm just making sure the floor is flat enough. We don't want any more than three sixteenths inch variants. Right here, we may have just a little bit more than that. I'm gonna add an extra layer or two of this underlayment to kind of build the floor up there. I should mention that you want to leave the flooring in the room for about a week beforehand so it can acclimate. So I found the center line of each wall and now I'm snapping a line on it. In case there's any bow or crookedness in the wall plate, this gives you a reference line that you know is square to the room, which helps ensure the floorboards go down straight. So you probably can't see it on camera, but I marked out the center point of the entire room. I'm going to take a measurement back to the back wall, remove half an inch, which is my expansion gap measurement. I'm going to take that same measurement all the way across to the center line of each wall. And that, and then I will snap a line along the back. The wall actually ended up being pretty straight. so. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, three of these little spacers together uh, lined up this way makes one half an inch. So I'll go ahead and insert those before I nail my first row. Well, a moment of truth. I face nailed the first row into place. This bamboo was really soft, so I pre-drilled and hand drove finish nails using a nail set for the last few taps. These nail heads will eventually be covered by base trim. If this was hardwood, I could just use my pin nail gun for this without fear of damage. Okay, I think I have this thing adjusted and calibrated for the dimensions of this flooring. And I'm about to shoot my first staple. And I think that's exactly the way it should look. Alright, let's see if I can back out this test staple. Alright, let's make sure that this... That seems like it goes in there just fine. Staple every eight inches. Staples were required instead of nails because the soft bamboo might get splintered if flooring cleats were used. I use a scrap of flooring as a beater board to drive the next row into place. So I'm just watching to make sure that this edge up here closes up if there's any gap. staggered the seam on each row. This material looked good with an even pattern since all the pieces in the box were of the same length. All right, well, I'm making some progress on this floor, but uh, gonna have to shoot the rest of this with uh, my iPhone because my better half is here to steal the camera. Where are you going with the camera darling? So I'm going to visit a guy who lives inside aircraft. He bought old Boeing 747 if I'm not mistaken and moved it into the forest in Hillsboro and he's been living there since uh, 2000, I think. I just got a cherry pie. I was buying cherry pie at the new season. What? Are you taking him a pie? Yeah. Did you get one for us too? No. <laughs> if you know how to okay, read in Russian, bye -bye. you should totally check out her blog. It's great. I'll put a link in the description. I used my table saw to cut out the pieces that were going to go around the doorway. This was my first time ever installing a floor, so it ended up being a long day. But 
I wanted to finish the floor that night so we didn't have to pay for a second day's rental on the floor stapler. Just putting a little bit of glue on this edge. I was a bit drained by the time I finished, but I was definitely satisfied. Now you've installed the floor. What's that? Now you've installed the floor. At this point, Eric considered the tea house to be ready for use, so we held off on doing any of the finish work for the time being. I don't know if this is any good, but nice. little tea house warming. Thank you. Yeah. It was really great to enjoy this moment in a building I had made myself. I learned a lot, and I'm glad I could share the process with you. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.